Alright, today I thought we'd talk about chargers for a couple of minutes. So today I've got a, uh, a new lithium battery for my uh, motorcycle and it's uh, a little bit different than usual batteries. It's a lithium battery with a BMS system and the uh, manual for it talks about charging at 14.6 volts. So I have an older Noco Genius G3500. You look in the manual, the uh, lithium setting on this one charges at 14.2 volts and then uh, on the newer NOCO charger here, the Genius 10, it charges at 14.6 when you look in the manual. So unfortunately when the NOCO came out with this new lithium battery, it does not really compatible with the uh, older gray style chargers that they made. And uh, this battery is rated at charging at 10 amps. It's got like three times the cranking current of a uh, regular lead acid battery, but only half of the capacity. So that's something to keep in mind. So it won't have much reserve capacity, but it'll crank a, a big motor over. And then I've got the older Old Faithful charger here. So this one, you can do a crank up to 75 amps and it's two amps and 12 amps. And it, it doesn't have uh, any real voltage adjustments on it. Other, like there's a battery type here, but it's not gonna set you up for a lithium ion battery. So I wouldn't recommend going with one of those for a um, lithium ion battery. Uh, one of the neat things about this charger is that you can actually start charging a dead battery, whereas that charger will not charge dead battery and then you can also set this up as a DC power supply. So you don't even need a battery at all. You can just uh, set it up to sit at 13.6 volts and run things like radios or whatever you want to run, or tire air compressors and what have you. And as long as it's under 10 amps, this thing will be fine. I got the SAE connector because I use this on a lot of my equipment. And it's the same one that fits onto this charger here and the old charger. I just separate the uh, connector and plug that on. And then like on my motorcycle, just by the handlebar, if you can see it or not. I'm set up on a tripod so I can't really get to it, but just uh, right there, yeah, I've got the SAE connector on it. So that's pretty handy. And uh, one thing I was sad to see with the older charger is like on the 120 volt side, the strain relief is broken and uh, the wires are actually exposed. So if you were to spin it around, it would actually short out. So that's uh, not good. The strain relief isn't supposed to break it's, and damage the cable. So that's something I gotta try to figure out and address. So the neat thing uh, with this battery is the, the cranking current that's available. It'll charge at minus 10, which is pretty good for a lithium battery. And it'll operate down to minus 20. And then it's got like these Lego adapters to make it fit the uh, application. So it's uh, pretty neat. I've been using UASA batteries and like my motorcycle has the uh, decompression removed on it so it and being a 400 cc single cylinder without any decompression on it you need a big battery to crank it over so i'm hoping with the extra current here i'm able to crank the thing because a lot of the times you'll hit the starter and it'll just stop it can't get a full revolution and then you gotta adjust the engine and then give it another shot and it doesn't have kickstart so it's a, a bit of a nuisance so hopefully this works and hopefully it's informative to you. So if you're going to buy one of these batteries, you got the old NOCO charger or you got a good old transformer unit. If you want to charge the battery outside of the vehicle or as a battery tender, you're going to have to get one of the newer NOCO Genius chargers. So I think they have one through 10. Then if you get more than 10 amps, they might be still the old style. So just keep an eye out for that. Unfortunately, you got to do a bit of reading before you uh, buy it. So anyway, thank you for watching.